My name is Agnes. I grew up on my grandparents' land in the mountains of northern Georgia. My mom, dad, my brother James and I lived in one house, and my grandma and grandpa lived in another house that was next to ours, within shouting distance. There were the two houses and a couple of small barns, and that was it. So my world as a child was rather small. I didn't attend public school. Instead, I was taught by my mother or grandma. And we had a town that was about 20 miles from our house, and my parents would drive there usually once a week to go shopping. And I always tried to go with my mom and dad when they went. My life was very small and sheltered, but as a child, I didn't know that. Every day, as long as it wasn't raining hard, once my studies and chores were done, I'd go out and play in the woods that surrounded us. I was allowed to play alone out there, but I wasn't supposed to go too far. Once I got a little older, there were many times that I went much further than I knew that I was allowed to go. But as long as I wasn't away from the house for too long, I never got into any trouble. When I was around eight or nine, I wouldn't wander too far. I guess at that age, I was just naturally more fearful. But by the time I was around the age of 12 or 13, I don't think I had any fears at all. When I was young, about eight or nine, it felt like I'd walked far, but the truth was that my grandma could still see me from her front porch. But with every year that I got older, I kept going further and further, shedding any doubts that I had and gaining grit with every day that passed. At 13 years old, I was a daring tomboy who loved climbing trees, playing in the creek and daydreaming while walking through the woods for hours, sometimes forgetting just how far I'd gotten. So, here's what I remember happening on April 8, 1964, a day that I'd been out walking, and a day that I've never forgotten. I was just a month away from my 14th birthday, and I was thinking about that at the time. It was a regular weekday afternoon, but I remember that I was happy, because I had no chores that morning. So I asked my mom if I could go for a walk. She told me to go ahead, but to be sure that I'm back by supper. And that was it. I was off running. I left the house right after lunch, so by the time 2 or 2.30 came, I bet I'd already walked for more than a mile. I was sitting up in a tree on a thick branch when I began to feel the wind pick up. That wind started up so suddenly, and it wasn't bright anymore. The sky turned very dark. It happened so fast that all I had time to do was climb down from the tree. My mind was just beginning to understand what was happening, but I didn't know what I should do, and I began to panic, which only made my situation worse. My ears felt blocked, but at the same time, I was hearing a loud metallic whistle, and it sounded and felt like there was a giant bird flapping its wings so fast that it was causing everything around me to vibrate. Instinctively, I knew it had to be a tornado, even though I couldn't see where the twister was. If I was at the house, I'd know exactly what to do, but I had no idea what to do in the woods. The storm came on me too fast, and there was no time for me to get home. I looked for something to hang on to, and I wrapped my arms around the branch of a large tree that I saw. I know now that that wasn't the best move, but at the time I didn't know any better. The next thing I knew, a giant came at me, and now I wondered if any of this was real. I wondered if I was dreaming the entire thing. The dirty, smelling giant grabbed me around the waist and threw me to the ground. He didn't hurt me, but as I went to the ground, I felt the force of him. Then he laid on top of me, and I think his arms were stretched out and he was holding on to something. I'm not positive because my head was under him and I couldn't see very well. I could barely breathe. I was terrified and I began to cry. I didn't know if the twister would pull me up or if the giant would suffocate me or hurt me once the storm passed. In just a few seconds, the whole thing was over. At first, I felt disoriented because something was over me, but I didn't feel the weight of the giant. Maybe he got pulled up, I thought. But he didn't. He was still hovering over me, but there was no weight on me. I don't know how he did it, but somehow he managed to cover me and protect me while keeping his weight off of me. Seeing the size of him, I knew I could never have felt his full weight, 
I was just a skinny child. I would have been crushed. He quickly jumped to his feet and allowed me to get up, and I saw that the fur all over his body had all kinds of sticks and leaves tangled in it. He looked me over, and then once again I was terrified because he threw me over his shoulder and he took off running with me. He's going to kill me and eat me, I thought, and I began to pray for him to kill me before biting me. I was really praying hard for that. I was so worried about the pain that I would feel, and I started bawling like a baby. My head bounced around on his back for just a moment or two when he suddenly came to a stop. That's when I thought I was going to pass out from fear. But he put me down and gave me a quick look, and then he just walked off in a very fast way, almost running. He was gone, and I realized where I was standing, and I went from being terrified to feeling so thankful. What an exhausting emotional ride I'd been on, and I felt exhausted and drained for days afterwards. My mom and dad were so happy to see me walking out of the woods. Mom, dad, and my grandparents were all crying when they saw me. Thankfully, our houses were okay, but so many of the trees had been ripped up, and my grandparents' barn had damage. It looked like a great big truck drove through those woods and made a new path, and I just couldn't get over how different those woods looked after the tornado. After everyone calmed down, I went and got cleaned up. My mom told me that I reeked of something fierce, and then I fell asleep, and I wound up sleeping very heavily for the next two days. A couple of days later, I went to my mom and dad, and I told them everything that happened in the woods on the day of the tornado. And then I told my grandparents, but nobody said anything to me after I told them about the giant saving me. They were oddly silent, so I didn't know what to think. I started to think that they believed I was making it all up, and finally I couldn't take the quiet anymore, so I went to my mom and dad, and I told them that I wasn't lying, that it all really happened just like I said it did. They told me not to worry about anything, and that they did believe me but I thought everyone was acting funny around me. Well, later that day, after supper, my grandpa told me to come sit with him on the porch. He started asking me questions about being in the woods during the storm, and he was asking if I had any aches or pains, or if I was hit by anything. I reassured him that I felt fine. Then grandpa started telling me that he was sure that the giant that helped me was what people called boogers, or the hill devils. Grandpa said that he hadn't heard of anyone seeing them for many years, so he thought they were all gone. He told me that they were feared by everyone, so he was very shocked that one of these boogers saved my life. Grandpa said they're very strong, and they weigh hundreds of pounds, and if the booger didn't cover me with its weight, I likely would have been tossed around by the wind. Grandpa said that he was very grateful to the booger for what it did, and that he'll keep that kindness in mind if he ever sees one. But then he began to warn me, telling me that just because I got saved by one doesn't mean that I should trust them. That really confused me. Grandpa warned me that if I meet up with one again, it might be that it carries me off and I'll be gone. He warned me that when he was my age, a girl went missing, and most people believed that she was taken by a booger. He said that he didn't know if that was true or not, but now that we know for sure that one is around, we ought to be careful. Grandpa asked me if I could tell if it was a male or a female. I told him that I was pretty sure it was a male. That's when I saw that Grandpa looked very concerned, and he gave me a strict warning. From now on, I was to stay out of the woods when I'm on my monthly. Grandpa told me that they can smell and track better than any hound, and that that was a very dangerous time for a woman. Well, Grandpa's talk really scared me. And from that day on, I had a fear of the woods that I'd never had before. I stayed much closer to the house after that day. Of course, I was terribly grateful to the booger, but I didn't want to be taken away from my family. And what Grandpa told me really scared me. And I remembered how quick it tossed me over its shoulder and ran with me. I knew that I'd be no match for its strength or its speed. I'm fairly certain that I saw the same booger one more time. It was a whole year later, and I was sure that I saw it standing in the tree line, watching me. Well, I got scared, and I ran inside the house. I don't know if it had any bad intentions. Maybe it didn't mean any harm at all. I don't know whether or not we should fear them, 
But I guess that I came to believe that you shouldn't fear dogs just because your grandpa told you that he'd heard that dogs can bite. Either way, I'll always be indebted to that booger for saving me during that tornado, and the least I could do is not judge them on what I don't know for sure. He showed me mercy that day, and I should judge him only on that. Okay, guys, that's it for tonight, but I'll see you in a few days. Have a great night, everyone.